The sine law is a formula we use when you're trying to find an angle or a side in a triangle that does not have a 90 degree angle in it. If there is a 90 degree angle somewhere in the triangle, you can use regular sine or cos or tan or SOHCAHTOA and just set up an opposite adjacent hypotenuse ratio. But when there's no 90 degree angle, you're going to need a different formula. To use sine law, you're also going to need a pair of a side and the angle that's across from it known within the triangle. Now the formula is that the side length divided by the sin or sine of the angle across from it is the same for all three sides of the triangle. These letters could be anything, but we use lowercase letters for the side lengths and capital letters for the angles that are across from them. It also doesn't matter if you put the sins on top or bottom as long as you're consistent within the same question. I use this version when I'm solving for a side length. I use this version when I'm solving for an angle. Here's an example. Find the unknown length here, x. Well, x is across from 80 degrees. But we know we can use sine law because we have a pair of a side and the angle across from it. Here we are given a side, that's little d, and it's across from the angle 60 degrees. Because we know both of those, and that's a pair across from each other, we can use sine law. Little d over the sin of capital D equals little e over the sin of capital E. Now I'm using D in my first ratio because that's the side length and angle that I know. And I'm using E because I know the angle and I'm looking for the side length that corresponds to it. Now I'm gonna plug my numbers in. Little D is 70 meters. Capital D is 60 degrees. Little E is what I don't know and capital E is 80 degrees. Now the way you can solve this is with cross multiplication. The top of one times the bottom of the other equals the top of the other times the bottom of the first one. And then you can undo this multiplication by dividing on the other side. Now you may note that you could also just undo this dividing by sin 80 by multiplying the other side by sin 80 and you end up with the exact same thing. Now to do this on your calculator, you just have to make sure you're in degree mode. On this calculator, I have a D, um, some just say DEG. If it's not in that mode, you're gonna have to press the reset button on the back of the calculator or change the mode so that that says DEG or degrees. If you're in radian or gradient mode, you're going to get the wrong answer when you use sin. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is 70 times sin 80, and then I'm going to divide by sin 60. I get an answer of 79.6. Now that kind of makes sense to me. This side length was 70 meters. This one is almost 80. The other thing I'll point out is that longer sides are often, or rather always, across from larger angles. Because the angle across from the unknown side was bigger than 60, I expected that side length to be bigger than 70. And it was. Great. Now let's do this one more time, but solving for an angle. Again, I can use sine law because I'm given a side and the angle across from it. That's a pair. Here I have capital H and little h known. I know what little i is, but I don't know what the angle capital I is. Because I'm solving for an angle, I'm going to put the sins on top. Sin capital H over little h equals sin capital I over little i. And now I'm going to plug numbers in where they go. Capital H is 45 degrees. Little h is 100. I don't know capital I, so I'm going to leave that there. 
And I do know small i is 140. Whoops, that's not in degrees, so let's get rid of that. In order to get to capital I here, I can cross multiply and then move the 100 over. Or I could simply undo this dividing by 140 by multiplying it on the other side. 140 times the sin of 45 divided by 100 will give me the sin of i. All right, I'm going to do all of this on my calculator all at once. That's 140 times the sin of 45 divided by 100. I end up with 0 0.9899. Ooh, that's pretty high. I want you to carry at least four decimal places here. I'm going to round at the end, but I don't like rounding midway through. Now to solve for capital I here, I need to undo sin. How do you undo the sine of something? Well, we call it inverse sine. Some people call it sine to the negative one. Some people call it arc sine. But you can move sin to the other side by making it sin to the negative one. Now that's not a power, it's actually just a symbol or notation. And you'll note on your calculator above sin, there is a sin to the negative one. That's undoing sine. So I'm going to press shift sin and use the previous answer. I'm not going to round. And I end up with 81.87 degrees. Now that makes sense. That angle is bigger than 45 because it was across from a longer side than 45 was. Cool. So sine law works the same way, you no know, whether you're solving for a length or an angle. And the point is you can go to this and use it when you don't have a 90 degree angle in your triangle and you have a pair of a side and an angle across from it. We knew those two numbers. We could use sine law. We knew a side and the angle across from it here. We can use sine law. If you don't have a pair, a side and the angle across from it, you're going to have to use something called cosine law. Surely your teacher has taught you that, and I'll have a video about that coming out very soon. See you soon. Best of luck.